What's up, guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everyone back to another uh, video and another review in the Crow series. And today I'm going to be reviewing The Crow Salvation, which is the third film in the franchise and the first one to go direct to video. And I can see why with this movie. Um, yeah, I, I think... I think The Crow is one of those franchises where each movie progressively gets worse. And again, I really like City of Angels. I think it's a very underrated movie. But after that, it just it just gets bad. <laughs> it really does. Um, and I can see why. You know, I can see why. Uh, you know, this movie has the reputation, and of course, the next movie has the reputation that. They do, because it's very uh, evident when you watch these movies. Now, um, for some reason, um, I guess Miramax wanted to, this movie to go to theaters. And apparently it tested horribly. And they released it in one theater for a week. And then they released it on video. And apparently, I, re I actually remember when this happened, because... Um, it was covered in uh, Wizard Magazine. For those that don't know, uh, Wizard Magazine, I don't even think they're around anymore, but it used to be a magazine dedicated to comic books. And I used to get them all the time at the grocery store. I used to like reading them. Um, a lot of the humor and stuff was very uh, far more mature, but I didn't get a lot of the humor then. But now when I look through uh, older issues and stuff I could see, you know, now I understand it. But I do remember one issue that I had, and then they're all, again, put away in storage. There was an article in there about this movie. There was an article about uh, the boycotting of this movie because uh, a lot of people were upset that they only released it in one theater for a week and uh, they thought that Miramax was intentionally just trying to, you know, sabotage the movie and not give it a chance, you know, and just dump it on video and not, you know, give people a chance to see it in theaters. But, you know, after watching this, because the other night when I watched it, it was the first time I had ever seen it. I had never seen The Crow Salvation before. Uh, for some reason... I never rented it from the video store. I never checked it out until now. Until, you know, reviewing The Crow Saga, I finally sat down and watched it. And again, you know, I could see why this movie was released direct to video. And, you know, again, the whole thing about Miramax possibly putting it in theaters, I really don't see that because. I don't see why they would do that because the movie looks very low budget. I was watching it. And I was like, wow, it looks like a, you know, a couple million dollar direct to video film. But the, apparently the budget was $10 million. I just want to know where all the budget went for this movie. It clearly did not go towards the movie. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, did it go to actors' paychecks? Did it go to the soundtrack? Because the soundtrack was pretty big. Um, Rob Zombie's on the soundtrack. Um, let me pull it up quick. Which um, Rob Zombie was on the City of Angels soundtrack, not solo, but it was um, it was White Zombie, and also um, Rob Zombie was attached to do a crow film which i'll get into in a little bit here but um around this time and it just never it never happened but the soundtrack um you know again it was pretty yeah, filter was on there who was on city of angels rob zombie kid rock hole um stabbing westward crystal method um Static X, Danzig. So there was a lot of well-known... Juliette Lewis. There was a lot of well-known... Um, you know, musical acts on the soundtrack. I guess that's where all the money went. <laughs> that and actors' paychecks. Because there is a decent cast of this movie. 
Oh, excuse me. Um, you know, there are some decent cast members in, in this. And, you know, they just weren't used to the potential, in my opinion. But, yeah. But, again, the movie looks very low budget. The Crow Wicked Prayer, which I know had a lower budget than this movie, um, looks better. It looks like, you know, an actual theatrical movie. That one does. But that one went to DVD as well, straight to DVD as uh as well, um, it had a, like with this movie, uh, The Crow Wicked Prayer had a uh, one week, one theater run, but that was it, you know, but yeah, but, you know, again, I, I remember reading that in Wizard Magazine that people were very upset that there was a boycott of, you know, the, the theatrical release because it was, they thought it wasn't fair, but again, I could see why, because it, this is not a good movie. I can see why this movie went right to video, because it's not a good movie at all. It's not a good Crow film, and it's if it was standalone, if it was its own movie, it wouldn't be a good movie by itself. Um, and, you know, again, uh, City of Angels is not based on any of the Crow comic books. It's just a sequel to the movie. This one is actually partly based on one of the Crow novels. Um... In the 90s, there was a series of Crow novels. There was like, I think, five or six, including an adaptation of uh, City, Angel City of Angels. And this one is based on the Lazarus Heart, which features a gay man who comes back um, as the Crow to revenge the murder of his lover. So I thought that was interesting. I'd like to read that book. Um but this movie, they took kind of the basis of that story and made it into a Crow film. You know, so again, the story of this one, um, which I do like the story. It's just everything else in the movie wasn't good. Um, the story is this guy gets executed because he was falsely accused of murdering his girlfriend. And, um, you know, he comes back as the Crow and he finds out what happened and why his girlfriend was killed and why they framed him and, and takes revenge on everyone. So again, it's it's a pretty straightforward story, you know, your typical revenge type movie. Um, you know, this one doesn't have any supernatural elements besides the, the character of the crow. It's not, you know, there's not anything with, um, you know, people trying to, take the power of the crow and all that. Um, it's just a pretty straightforward idea of the guy dies, he gets killed in the electric chair, comes back as the crow, and kills the people that, you know, murdered him and his girlfriend. Um, so that part I liked, but that was really it. The, the story I liked, everything else about this movie I just didn't care for. Uh, one of the biggest problems that I have with it, it was too long. Um, this movie is 102 minutes, which is an hour and 42 minutes. The first movie was 101 minutes, but it cut at a good pace. It never got boring. It never dragged. It wasn't hard to follow. This movie, it, it's way too long. It moves at a very sluggish pace. And then when things are happening, when the action does happen, you know, it, it just, it, it's very forced. And it just looks hokey. And the special effects aren't very good in this movie. And I get it, it's a low-budget film. But, you know, I've seen plenty of low-budget movies with, you know, better special... Like Attack the Block, which I just reviewed. You know, that movie, I don't know how much the budget was, but the special effects in that movie look better than this. And this that movie was made in 2011. This movie was made in 2000. So there you go. Um... You know, and then they also reuse a lot of footage from the first movie. A lot of uh, there's a car chase. Most of the car chase footage is from the first crow, and there's a lot of shots of the actual crow, the bird, and that's all taken from the first movie. And I was like, really? Like, come on now. But yeah, um, in terms of the cast, uh, the crow is Eric Mabius, and I thought Eric Mabius was going to be a big time actor. Um, in the late 90s and early 2000s, he was in quite a bit. He was in this. And this movie did get a little attention, a little publicity because of the fact that it's The Crow. 
but you know, of course, it never went anywhere. But he was in Cruel Intentions. He was in the first Resident Evil movie, and he was kind of popping up a bit. And I thought he was going to be like the next big thing, and it never, it never happened to him. But I mean, he's had a career because he was on that TV show Ugly Betty. He's been in a bunch of stuff, but he never had like a huge career, like say you know Brandon Lee would have had if he lived. But you know, I thought this guy was going to be like the next big deal. And apparently he also auditioned for the role of Fun Boy in the first movie, and he obviously didn't get it. But there you go. Um, Kirsten Dunst really doesn't have much to work with. She plays the sister of the Crow's girlfriend, and she kind of helps him, you know, figure out what happened and, and help him out. I don't know. Like, I like Kirsten Dunst. You know, I don't mind her as an actress, but she just seemed very out of place in this movie. And she didn't really do anything. Like, she didn't really help progress the movie much. And she was just kind of there when she needed to be there. And, you know, really didn't help matters, you know, to be honest. Um, Fred Ward is the lead villain. You know, I do enjoy seeing Fred Ward. But, um, you know, he was one of the better actors in this. But, you know, it was it's always good to see him. Uh, William Atherton's in it, uh, you know. Dick List from Ghostbusters, he plays the dad of Kirsten Dunst, and he, you end up, you find out that the reason why the crow, the character died and his girlfriend got killed is because she witnessed um, these dirty cops murder someone, and these dirty cops were in cahoots with her dad, and it's all this, you know, corruption and all that kind of stuff going on. So, you know, he's part of the. The villain, so to speak. And then you have Walton Goggins, who's in the film, who was in Predator. He was the the convict in Predators. Um, you know, he was on the show Justified. He's been in a bunch of stuff over the years. And that's it for recognizable faces. Um, the dude from Murphy Brown's in it. Uh, he plays the Crow's lawyer. Uh, he was in Murphy Brown. He was also in another show called Oliver Bean, which I do really like from the early 2000s. I'm watching it and I'm like, this guy looks really familiar. And I looked at it, I'm like, oh, Murphy Brown. Okay, now I remember. And then, of course, Oliver Bean. But anyway, I, I got sidetracked. I thought Eric Mabius was just not right for this role. Um, you know, I just didn't think he could pull the crow off. And the action, like there's, a, there's one fight scene in the movie where I was watching it. He's like in this strip club and he's fighting this guy and the choreography looked very hokey it looked very forced i just i don't know it just you know this movie you know it, it just it doesn't look good i'm sorry well i'm not sorry to be honest but you know it's just a lousy looking movie again i don't know where this 10 million dollars went because it didn't go to the movie because the movie doesn't, it's not visually appealing. It looks very cheaply made. It looks like they made it for less than $10 million. And, you know, I just didn't buy Eric Mabius as the crow. I really didn't, you know. Um, and they didn't, like, the, the one thing about the sequels is the makeup always changes a little bit. Um, you know, in the first movie, he painted his face and then drew the, the eyebrows and, and everything and then the lines and then the mouth. In two, he just kind of drew the paint on. He put a little bit on, but it wasn't much. In this one, um, it just, after he gets electrocuted, his like skin falls off and it just makes the crow look. And I was like, okay, whatever. But yeah, you know, this movie, I don't know. It just, it, it there was nothing redeeming about it. It just didn't fit in the Crow series. You know, it wasn't anything special either. It was nothing particular, you know. And it just, the whole movie seemed, you know, again, it's very, it's a very sluggish movie. It, it takes a while to develop. And then when things happen, like when the action and stuff happens, when the actual, like, revenge and everything happens, it just, it's not satisfying. It just did not work. It really did not work, at least for me. Um, apparently, this movie was reviewed better than City of Angels, which is a little hard for me to believe. But, I don't know, maybe people like this one more than City of Angels. And that's that's them, you know, you're allowed to. Um, but, 
I don't know. I just, again, this movie had, it really had nothing going for it. It really didn't. I just, you know, I guess they, they wanted to continue the Crow saga and they, you know, took inspiration from one of the Crow books and, you know, tried to make a movie. It just, it seems like, you know, everyone was not trying. Like, I guess people didn't want to be there. They didn't want to do it. I don't know. But it just seems like there was no effort put into this. And again, it's a, I think the movie was boring. I was, I was struggling to, to kind of pay attention to it. Um, you know, there really wasn't, you know, and then the girl that played the girlfriend, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe from Halloween H2O, you know, she was there for the flashback scenes and that was it. But, you know, sometimes, you know, like, like I say about all these newer films, a lot of these newer films that come out, sometimes you just don't need to make them. You know, sometimes you should just leave things alone. And that applies to anything, you know, older movies like this. You know, did you really need Crow 3 and 4? No. I mean, did you really need City of Angels? No. And to be perfectly honest, you didn't need any sequels, but I do like that one, you know. Um, but did you really need 3 or 4? No, you really didn't. Because, again, this one and Wicked Prayer are prime examples. There's no effort in both of these movies. And I'll get more into Wicked Prayer because I have, to be honest, I have more bones to pick with that you know, pun intended, um, but yeah, you know, it just, at the end of the day, you know, this movie was lousy, it's a lousy sequel, it's a lousy Crow film, and again, if it was standalone, if it was its own movie, I would still find it lousy, there, you know, it's just, it's very cheap looking, it's, a slow burn, it takes a long time to get into, uh, again, I was fighting to hold my attention, and it's just, it's not satisfying as a movie. It's really not. And again, this apparently $10 million budget, where the hell did it go? Did I think it probably went to the soundtrack and the, uh, the paychecks of the actors. Because it didn't go into the movie. Because again, there's plenty of other movies out there that are $10 million and below that I've seen that look much better and people actually care enough. You know, to be in the movie. I don't know. I don't know what the case may be with it. But, yeah. Just a, a lousy, boring sequel. You know, and, and again, one that we did not need, in my opinion. But anyway, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review. And I can't call it a rant because it doesn't, like, make me angry enough to call it that. I mean, I'm not really angry about it. I'd never seen it before. So, you know, I checked it out once didn't care for it i'll never see it again i'll never buy it and that's it and while i'm doing the you know the the reviews here i'll just do it so people can hear my thoughts and that's it so there you go but i hope that you guys enjoyed this video stay tuned next i will be reviewing hopefully the final crow movie another lousy movie the crow wicked prayer so until the next time as always once again thank you guys for watching take care and i'll talk to you later